My name is Shelby, and this takes place when I was just 11 years old. It was an average day, and I had just come back from school. I did my homework like any normal night. I tend to put off my homework until about 8 or 9, since as an 11-year-old, I wasn't really a fan of it. My mom always liked to hang out in our back room to smoke or watch TV. But that day, she was a little odd. Her eyes did not look normal. In fact, they look like that of a dead person. But as an 11-year-old in fifth grade, I just moved on and went to bed. I used to have an older sister, but I never knew her. Sadly, she died at birth due to a sickness that her and my mom got. Whenever I heard that story, I used to feel upset, since I was an only child and always lonely. My dad worked late nights driving the train, and my mom was sometimes addicted to things that I can't really share here. But let's not get sidetracked. I went to bed that night around 10 p.m. like I always do, but I woke up in a strange place. It looked like a forest with a cleared out path, the kind you go hiking on, but it was really foggy and I couldn't see what was going on. So I started to move closer to the trail. But as I started to walk, I heard a voice say, Sissy? I spun around so fast and I saw a very tall girl, like around seven feet tall. She had pale skin and brown hair, but the hair was not normal. It looked greasy and stiff, but for some reason, I felt calm. I could see some things that my sister who passed away had, like the birthmark on her cheek. It suddenly dawned on me. I ran to her and hugged her yelling, big sissy, I miss you so much. She replied, I do too. I've been watching and waiting for you. Now that you're here, why don't we have a nice tea party? She said while giving me an oddly creepy smile. But I agreed since me and my mom didn't have much fun together. As my older sister took me to this tea party, I noticed that her face was a little different. Her eyes were bloodshot red and her lips were pale blue and cracked like when you have very dry lips, and she smelled like something decaying, like a dead corpse. But this was my sister, so I shoved all that away, and we kept walking for a while until we got to a poorly looking table with just two teacups with some tea in it. She told me to sit down, so I sat down. I was actually scared to drink the tea, but I did drink it. And when I did, I was shocked. It tasted just like the one my dad makes. After a while, I said, it's time for me to go now. I could tell this made her very mad. She stood up, slammed her hands on the table, and started growling like an animal. Her teeth were sharp and her eyes were like that of a cat, but black with red dots in them. And she started screaming at me. You took my spot. I should have been born, not you. You should have died at the hospital. You should, not me. At that point, I was scared to death. I was too scared to move, and I couldn't even see very well because my eyes were filled with tears. She grew. She started to grow taller and thinner. I could see her bones. And then she yelled, I need to take care of her. Mom doesn't love you. She loves me. I need to watch her, not you. I need to make her that soup so she can die. Just come and I can be you finally. In my mind, I knew it was Thursday and I always cook soup for my mom on Friday. Then she tried to grab me. So I started to run as fast as I could. I was born with asthma and just running down my block is difficult but I knew my life was on the line here. So I ran as fast as I could, and I just kept running. I could hear what was my older sister that turned into a monster chant, I need her to die. I need to get my hands on her, over and over again. At this point, I felt like I was gonna pass out. I quickly turned to see if it was still following me. And what I saw was this creature crawling on the ground. 
Its skin was pale and it had black eyes with red dots in them. And it was just all bones and I could see its disgusting teeth and tongue. I don't know how, but I just got so much energy that I ran and I ran and I ran. But then I tripped and fell on something. I saw that my legs were stuck on a rope. Then that thing came over and stood up and started to say, I now have you where I want you, it said in a demonic voice. Then it pounced at me, and that's when I woke up. I looked at the clock. It was 5.15 a.m., the time I always get up to get ready to go to school. So I did just that, hoping it was just a bad dream. After school, when I got home, I cooked the soup I always make for my mom, just like that thing said in the dream. Suddenly, the phone rang. It was my dad, but he didn't say the usual, hi, how are you? Instead, the only thing he kept saying was, where's your mother, Shelby? Where is your mother? I walked to the back room and said, she's passed out on the floor, Papa, like it was no big deal. I looked at my father on the phone and I could tell he was scared. He told me to try to wake her up, but she never woke up. That's when he said, pack your things, Shelby. Your aunt and uncle are coming. Now I was confused and scared, but I got my stuff together and waited. Suddenly, my aunt and uncle burst through the door and ran to my mom. They kept screaming, Rhoda, wake up! Rhoda, wake up! But she never woke up. They rushed me to the car and called the ambulance. I was confused, but when my mom was about to be taken away by the paramedics, she shot up and yelled, I'm not going! Everyone was so confused, but my mom put up a fight. They let her stay at home, but I was sent to go with my aunt and uncle. Later that night, my dad came to pick me up, and thankfully, my mom was asleep. We silently passed her and headed to bed. The next day, my mom was perfectly fine, like nothing happened. I was just happy to have my mom back, but as I was on the bus, I remembered that dream I had about my older sister. I think she was just trying to warn me about my mom. But as a kid, I wondered if I could ever see her again and just ask for peace. 